Welcome to another Friday Functions video. In this Friday Functions video, we're going to talk about adding functionality to launch or to trigger a flow from inside of your Power App. So this is a scenario where we're not talking about what happens at the data source, you know, where, you know, I noticed that in, in the past we used to do a lot of SharePoint designer workflows and we would say on if this th thing changes or if this item gets added and so on based on the list itself in SharePoint, then launch a workflow. Well, what we couldn't do is actually launch a workflow from directly in a form, which means that we're not paying any attention to what's happening on the list level, but the end user has a reason to launch a flow. This can also be done conditionally. Today, I'm going to add a flow trigger to my Power App. So I have created a Power App called Change Approvals. This is an app that I'm kind of working on. I want to make this kind of perfect full circle solution for um, handling change order requests for construction. Pretty common need in construction is to be able to manage when contractors ask for change. Okay. Now, in this particular case, the app has been made for the resident engineers. The contractors have been invited into the SharePoint site as external users, and they basically use the SharePoint form to add their items to the list. And then the resident engineers use this Power App in order to review the change orders and uh, possibly make changes to them and approve and deny them. So in this particular case, what we have noticed is that we've been getting more and more stolen equipment. And this is in my Contoso construction company scenario that's fictitious. We've been getting a lot of stolen vehicles. So what we want to do is enable the resident engineer to notify our security Yammer group every time a, a piece of equipment is noted as stolen. Okay, so I'm going to go run this app and you'll see here's my change orders. Some of them are cost impacts, some are schedule. But you see this truck here? I'm going to go to that truck one and um, don't pay any attention to these dates. I know these have been waiting for a while because they're all fictitious. It's just my way of um, working through my change order app. Now, this description says that one of the trucks was stolen yesterday, so we didn't complete the work, and we need a replacement truck. So basically, they're going to need more time, but actually, they're also going to we're also going to need to get them a new truck, which to the to the project owner or the program owner is going to be a cost. It's just not a cost to the contractor. So. What we want to enable the resident engineer to do when they're looking at this screen is to press a button and notify our security Yammer group that a, another piece of equipment has been stolen. And what they'll do is launch an investigation. Another reason you might want to use a button in an app like this is maybe you're working with Zendesk. And because a new truck is needed, you need to create a ticket in Zendesk to request a new truck or to have some servicing done on a, on, on a truck that's standing by to be a replacement. So you might want to create a ticket in Zendesk. You might want to report an incident that has occurred, but it's something that you decide when you're looking at the app. So let's see how I would add this button that's going to notify Yammer if, if some equipment is stolen. So the first thing I'm going to do literally is insert a button. Because this is, this is what the resident engineer will use to launch this uh, flow. I'm going to make my display template a little bit shorter so that I can put my button underneath it. I could also have added it as a, as a card. Um, the advantage of adding it as a card is it gives you that this item opportunity. But I'm just going to go ahead and manually uh, edit this. And I'm just going to name this Notify Yammer. Okay, so this... Um, or I, I can say, you know, if I want to be more generic, I can say notify security. Security actually has a Yammer group, and that's how I'm notifying them. All right. So let's get started with our flow. I'm going to click on notify. I'm going to click on action, and you'll notice that flow is included in our actions. And then I click on flow. And I have a whole bunch of flows because I do flows a lot. But I'm going to click a new flow. Let's do this from scratch. 
And as soon as it, do, it does that, it will bring me into my flow environment, into the same environment where my app is, okay? So I'm going to just uh, give it a new step and add an action. And what I'd want to do is, and, and again, look at this. I can do any action I want, but I've decided to post to Yammer in this case. And I'm going to choose Yammer. And I'm going to post a message to Yammer. I want my message, I'm a, I want the group, and I love the way Flo is going to just highlight all my groups for me. So I'm going to put this in my Power Apps Feeds group. In, in real life, this would go to the security group that's handling stolen equipment. And then I'm going to actually build my message in Power Apps. So all I'm going to do is click where the message goes and then say Ask in Power Apps. And then my network ID will be default. But depending on what Yammer network you networks you have, you may be able to choose other networks. You notice that I also have the Azure Advisors network, but my default network happens to be Microsoft. But you might have multiple Yammer networks, just pick the one that's needed. Now I'm going to rename this Security Equipment Stolen Alert, as simple as that. And I'm going to create that flow. Real easy. And then I'm going to say done. Okay. Now that my flow is created, I can now, um, I can choose at this point to share it with other people, but it's cool just the way it is. I'm going to go back to Power Apps, and you'll notice that it's right there on the bottom, and I'm going to click on it. And now my security flow has been added to my app, and a new function has been started for me up above, right? But it needs the message that I want to post. So I'm going to do a two-part message. I'm going to say equipment stolen. And after equipment stolen, I'm going to give some of these details. So I'm going to hit a, put a comma. And then let's put the um, project name. So project. Uh, and I'm using Browse Gallery 1 selected project because I'm in the detail form. So the project has been selected already. So I can just refer back to that selection. Um, I'm also going to add another space and um, add the description text, right? So let's add in that space, let's add the prefix of description. And then let's put that description text in there. So browse gallery one dot selected dot description, right? Now I can also add, let's add another space and the word link to details. Right? Since this is on SharePoint, I can also add the link to this item. So I'll do Browse Gallery 1, Selected, and then the link. Okay. Um, the link is kind of long, but I'm going to add it anyway so you can see it. So basically, I have built my message by concatenating the and sign, these different uh, elements of this display form. Now, uh, let's go to look at look at this group first so that you believe me. I'm in this group, and I've made this uh, test group here called Power Apps Feeds, and that's the one we used in our flow. It has nothing in it. No matter how many times I refresh, there's nothing there. Um, if I go ahead and add something, I can add something so you can see that it works. Post. And now there is another post that says add something. So now we're going to try our app. So I'm just going to play this app. And then all I'm going to do is click Notify Security. Now, of course, one thing I might do is after that button runs, I might also add um, a navigation to the end of here. So I might go from here and then do Navigate in order to navigate to another screen that might say, thank you, your Yama post has been made or something like that, right? Just so they're not left there wondering if they clicked on the button or not. So now I'm going to go back to my Yammer. And there is our new post. 
The project is Project B. The description is one of the trucks was stolen yesterday, so we did not complete the work. They can see the impact. If they want to see everything, they can click on the link that will open up the item in SharePoint. So that's how easy it is to create a button in Power Ups that launches a flow. Really fun stuff. I hope you'll give it a try, and I hope you're enjoying the experience of making awesome Power Ups for your business as well. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you at the next Friday Functions video.